Hey guys, welcome to the Kirk Miller podcast. I'm absolutely delighted about today's guest. We're trying to make this happen for a little while, but the person I've got on the Kirky Miller podcast today is a fascinating individual. Um, I don't really know where to start with, to, to introduce the one and only Phil Graham, really, but uh, how long have we known each other, Phil? When did you first come across me? Probably taking my top off. Lucky. I first met <laughs> you. Like I, want to be. I first met you, and I thought you were a prick. Uh, <laughs> it was with a mutual friend of ours in London, <laughs> and I was in uh, one of the ice bars in London. And uh, our, our mutual friend had said, "Oh, we're going to go and meet Kirk." And I like looked you up, and I saw this like fitness guy, and I was like, "Oh, this guy's going to be an absolute prick." And uh, we met. We went to the ice bar, and then you turned out to be all right. And then we've been. Uh, I think after that moment, we, we probably didn't connect for maybe a couple of years. And yeah. then it was from that point on, uh, we became friends and <laughs> we became a student. And it's just been, it's been fascinating watching everything happen. So that's what we're going to talk about today. <laughs> yeah, so uh, for anyone listening to this on audio or watching this back on YouTube, I've probably never had anyone absolutely destroy me off the bat <laughs> like that. But... Just to give some context of Phil, um, yes, we are friends, but Phil is or has been a, a, a monumental Im- influence and had a monumental impact on my, my, my business in particular. Um, he is CEO, founder of the world's number one fitness business mentorship program, the fitness, fitness entrepreneur. Fitness entrepreneur. Um, yeah, simply put, he's the guy that you know, elite online coaches, people who are turning over six figures, coaches who are turning over six figures, go to, to take to seven figures. It, it's disturbing how much this man knows about his subject, but in a good way. Um, and, and that's why I first reached out to Phil, probably about five years ago now, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, and, you know, he took me from a very overworked personal trainer, completely wing it online. Uh, I mean, I remember when I was first in that first power room, you know, with some of the coaches, Phil, and I didn't even have like a coaching app to house client programs. I remember, do you remember me talking about the coaching apps that can, yeah. you know, where I can organize my client programs. And I think you and the rest of the, the, the people in that room were looking at me going, this guy, it's, it's, it's outstanding how bad he is with his technology stuff. Because He's in was, the wrong room. <laughs> it was just, He's in the wrong Zoom room. And it's probably thinking, hang on, this guy's like, you know, the most ripped guy there, one of the most established in terms of reputation, yeah, you know, with the mental yeah. health stuff. But it was yeah. just staggering how much I, you know, humbly admit, didn't know about business, but I knew Phil was the one person to straighten that out. And yeah, he's just a machine. Obviously, you know, Phil, I'll elaborate on a, little bit, on, on a personal level now. Obviously, you're, into your, you're investing now, Phil, as well, and, and not really high-level public speaking and, um, you know, other forms of mentorship. Yeah. You know, so just to t- tell the listeners and, you know, what, 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 drives, what drives you now, well, Phil? Like, what is... What is oh, I, think, can, I think it's very important that to paint the picture as to why I'm here. Yeah. And, you know, I was diagnosed with type one diabetes when I was 16. And the lead up to that was very fascinating because I was, you know, I was overweight. I didn't value anything health and fitness related. And I remember going to school one day on the bus and uh, we used to stop in this local uh, coffee shop in Belfast before I went into school. I had to be in the school for like 8.45. And, we would always get in at like 8.05 and then go in. And I used to have what we call an Ulster fry, which is like bacon, soda bread, uh, eggs, sausage, you know, like, you know the cheap ketchup? ketchup? Not like Heinz. I know, I know, I know like, the one. You know the one on the red bottle that yes. you, you turn upside down? It's, like, it's a great <laughs> bottle. Like every time you get one in like a, a diner or something, it's great. So I'd had that and I had like tea with multiple sugars in it. And then I would have gone around to, we have a, a news agent around here called Centra. It's similar to like Spar and stuff. Yeah. And then I would have gone in and had like maybe, you know, two Highland toffee bars, you know, a, bottom, a, a bottle of Vitamo, um, you know, uh, like, you know, some Wam bars. You know the Wam bars? I remember the Wam bars. Yeah, they, 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 I think I took my tooth out. And yeah. And um, so like, you know, before nine o'clock, I was like loaded on like maybe four and a half thousand calories and like predominantly of carbohydrate and saturated fat yeah. and hydrogenated oil. Yeah. And uh, long story short, on the way into school that day, I, I remember my eyesight was blurry and this was a staple routine of mine. This was like the, these routines of going and getting a big fry, going and eating junk food and going into school was a, was a fixed routine at that age. Um, I wasn't obese, I was overweight, right? And 
long story short, throughout the course of that day, I began to feel progressively worse. And I can remember distinctly going to the toilet all the time. I can remember my eyesight being blurry. And if you understand what diabetes is, it's when the pancreas essentially fails to produce insulin and it can't get rid of the glucose in the bloodstream. Yeah. So the, blood, uh, the, the glucose then you know, affects the eyesight and it affects blood pressure and all this stuff. So I said to my mom about it, long story short, went to a doctor's checkup and turns out I got diagnosed with type 1 diabetes very quickly after that. My mom started crying and I got marched down this corridor and essentially, you know, I was told that, you know, you might go blind, you might have organ failure, um, you might lose a limb, you might, you might, you might, you might. And I heard this language, which was very speculative and it was about might and it was like possibly could. There's a chance of, there was no definite, there was no like, you're going to do this or you're going to do that. Mm -hmm. So the first thing that clocked on at my age at 16, I was like, right, there's hope here. Yeah. So I've got a responsibility now to actually take control of the areas that have actually essentially to a degree resulted in this. Mm. And I remember hearing about nutrition, training, <laughs> exercise, mindset, supplements, uh, medication, all of this stuff. And I went, right, those are the areas that I'm going to learn. Those are the areas that I'm going to master in order to allow me to master my own life. But before that, Phil, was there no, that wasn't even on the radar? That I would, I wouldn't have known what a carbohydrate was. I yeah. wouldn't have known what a protein was. When you're told that your health has been taken away from you and that you are not going to be able to do certain things, your, your psychology shifts. And in life, if you ever want to disrupt a pattern or if you ever want to change the trajectory of your life, you have to be knocked off it, mm. right? And normally that's the universe's way of knocking you off things and yeah. correcting you. And I'm a, I'm a firm believer that there's a predetermined theme in life and that is love and that is of growth and every challenge that you go through always has this beautiful upside on the other end of it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and this is upon reflection now when I was 16, but back then I was, I was afraid, I was scared. I, I, you know, I thought my life was over. I thought it was compromised. And if each and every one of you guys are listening to this right now, especially those of you that are, you know, seasoned entrepreneurs and high performers, um, and you maybe haven't come to an, a, a point in your life where you haven't had your health. Um, it is the most valuable thing that you can have, right? Beyond money, beyond family. If you do not have your health, you cannot function as a human. You cannot enjoy mm -hmm. life. You cannot enjoy your family. You cannot enjoy business. And, you know, especially for seasoned entrepreneurs listening to this, you guys are at risk because you put so much energy and focus into achieving the thing that you want to do that you neglect your health. And I, I can't remember who, who says the quote, but you know, we spend our whole entire lives trying to build these wealth and riches and we end up actually recirculating it back to actually fix the stuff that we've broken along the way, mm -hmm. right? So, you know, as a, as a principle, guard your health because your life depends upon it. So I went and studied and learned and literally opened textbooks the very minute that I walked out of that diabetes clinic. What age was that again? Um, 16. 16. So I was like, right, I've got to learn and I've got to understand how if I eat a Kit Kat, what happens to my blood sugar? I've got to understand if I exercise, this happens to my blood sugar. So I began, I, I looked at the human body. I understood the human body. I understood food. I understood exercise. I understood medication. Mm. And I decided that, right, okay, what am I going to do with my life? I, I was always entrepreneurial. I, I never was very good working with people. When, when did you first realize, Phil? that you were entrepreneurial? Was there a pivotal moment? When I was younger, I just, I always liked buying and selling things. I liked exchange, exchanging things. And, you know, I had, you know, I never liked being told what to do. I never liked... Uh, but, 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 but was there a certain person or a certain moment? Because obviously I, I'm fascinated by this. Well, I, I, I grew up in a household where my mom was the main bread earner and my dad was a business owner. And he wasn't an ultra successful business owner, but I, I, I grew up in a household where my mom was the main bread earner. And... Mm. Essentially, you know, the whole thing about being an entrepreneur was, uh, you know, I didn't want to relive the life of not having enough or having a lack or not yeah. having not having control of my circumstances. Mm -hmm. And I saw being an entrepreneur as the vehicle for me having control over my life and my destiny. And I kind of just overshot a little bit, right? Um, my parents wanted me to go into a career, go into, you know, be a lawyer, be a doctor, whatever. And I didn't I didn't like any of that because it wasn't really, it didn't fit me. So the did, whole- did, did, did that affect your relationship with them during that period? Yeah, it certainly did. Not at the start because I didn't know any better, but as I began to evolve, and this will come in the story, is I, like, I wanted to con have control of my time. And the business was the vehicle for me to do that. The business was the vehicle for me to control my time. It was the vehicle for me to control my energy, my mission, my purpose, but all of it stemmed from diabetes because 
Here's what happened. My health was taken away from me. Health and all the variables that impact health became a value of mine. And then when they became a value of mine, I went to university and I studied nutrition. My dream is to be a dietitian or to set up my own nutritional practice. Mm. And as I began to acquire that knowledge, I fell in love with lifting weights and I fell in love with going to the gym. And I remember when I first went to the gym, you know, I was overweight, I was type one diabetic, and I, I had the insecurity of the complication and the health implication. I had the insecurity of never being in a gym before, and I had the insecurity of being overweight. And the first gym that I chose to go to was the hardest core bodybuilding gym that you could what ever you, possibly you, what, imagine. What, what it's called it? Rock Pit Fitness in Lisburn. Is that still here now? It's not oh, no. still here now, it's yeah. gone. And long story short, I walked in and it was just literally full of meatheads. Right? <laughs> it was full of meatheads, it was full of people that were playing sport. It was full of like the most, it was the most extreme environment you could yeah. have gone to. It wasn't a pure gym, it wasn't a David Lloyd, <laughs> it wasn't a beautiful health spa. It was a dust on the floor, hardcore, drop the dumbbells, shout, you know, <laughs> Like it was, it was, you know, like Metro Flex and like Ronnie Coleman trains out of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And anyway, I fell in love with the weights, right? And I, I, I began to lift weights and I began to see the shape of my muscles change. I began to see my body shape change. I liked the challenge of pushing out reps and not being strong enough to push through. And I became addicted with this kind of like, every time I'm going into the gym, I'm actually building myself. Mm -hmm. I'm improving myself. And, uh, that, along with all the knowledge that I'd been acquiring about understanding nutrition and training and all these things, complemented each other. And I, I, I built a great physique. And people started to look at it. And they knew that I was studying in university. And they started to ask me for diet plans. They started to ask me for training plans. They started to do this. And I remember that you know, somebody asked me to build them something. I built it, and I give it away for free. And then somebody else did it, and I did it again, give it away for free. Then somebody else did it, and then I began to charge for it. I charged like 25 quid, then it went to 50 quid, then it went to 150 quid, then it mm. went to 500 quid, then it mm. went to 1,000. And it went up and up and up. And I realized very quickly, I can actually make more money doing this than going to work for the health service. I can do it in my own time. I can personalize it. There's not as much red tape around it. I can have a bigger impact. I can do more than just the training protocols mm. and just the nutrition protocols. I can give these people advice. I can give them accountability. Yeah. And then it was this point where I made you know, I'd made the equivalent of what I would have made in an NHS career in a year, in a week. And I, I said to my mom, you know what, uh, after university, I'm gonna get my, my degree and I'm gonna build my own business. And I was told, oh, don't, you know, uh, stay small, that's risky, like your father's got a business, you know how stressed he is, and you know, you're gonna have to worry about staff, and are you still gonna be on the gym floor when you're, when you're 50 years of age, yeah, and yeah, all yeah. these kind of things. Yeah. And I, I had a vision for my business that was bigger than the circumstances that I find myself in. Mm. And I led with that vision and, you know, fast forward to where we're at now, I, I mean, I have coached tens of thousands of people. I eventually took my knowledge of diabetes and wrote the world's best selling encyclopedia on diabetes and muscle building, mm -hmm. built the world's largest community for type one diabetics and muscle building and fat loss. And then with that, I also coached because I had the education around nutrition and physiology and yes. all that. I ended up having, like a lot of coaches saw the growth of my business and they go, I, I wanna have that. I wanna, I wanna learn from you. So I began coaching coaches. Um, and over, that's just scaled and growing. And now, you know, we run the world's largest growth organization for not only personal development and business development for fitness entrepreneurs, it, it really has just exploded. And, uh, you know, Netflix have recently reached out to do a documentary on that work and, and the impact that it's had. And I never grew this thing with the, I never and wanted, they, they came to you, didn't they, Phil, as well? They but, reached out to me and they were like, yeah. look, we've heard you've been, obviously, they work with so many fitness people yep. and so many gyms and whatever, and my name had been brought up and brought up, and then the fact that I had type 1 diabetes and turned this adversity yep. into a purpose and turned this purpose into wealth and turned this wealth and purpose and knowledge into wealth and purpose and knowledge for a lot of other people. Mm. So I, you know, if I look at the success that I've had in life, it's because I've been able to rechannel my adversity into purpose it's because I've made a lot of other people successful. It's because I've made a lot of other people healthy and I've been very consistent in doing that. So, you know, when I look at diabetes now, you know, there's not one ounce of my being that is, is in any way ungrateful for that experience. Mm. And when you look at a, you know, a, 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 a chronic illness like that, um, you know, I, I'm grateful for it. And that's a, a you know, that's extremely liberating. So, the, my, my, and I've, you know, because I've had my health taken away from me, um, I have a very, very deep, I'm a very deep thinker. I have a very uh, unique way of looking at life. And for me, life is all about 
you know, really trying to make the most out of every single moment, really mm. trying to make the most out of me as an individual and, you know, really trying to be as present and embraced in every second of every day that I can. And I got, you know, I have challenges and I have problems, but again, on the other side of those is this growth. But if you can live with that predetermined trust and theme in every challenge that is going to face you on the other end of it, I know I'm going to be okay. So, you know, as a business owner and anybody that's listening to this, whether you're going through a downturn at the moment or whatever, you know, if you're worried and you're anxious about, right, where, what am I worried about? Am I worried about going broke? Am I worried about not being significant enough? Am I worried about um, losing my status? Am I worried about being humiliated, right? Nine times, 10 times, 10 times out of 10, you've always been okay. Mm -hmm. So if you can lock your heart, if you can lock your mind, if you can lock your gut into knowing that you're going to be okay no matter what, as long as you keep around good quality people, as long as you've got a vision for your life, as long as you lead with action, you're not just a, somebody that thinks about this stuff and doesn't take action. Those are the three things that will keep you safe. Yeah. What, what would you say, Phil? I mean, because I mean, the, the success you've built is, is crazy. Um, the, 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 the biggest challenge on, on route to where you are now Say from a business standpoint, first mm. and foremost, what has been your biggest challenge? It could uh, be consistent across all these businesses. The, 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 the biggest challenge of any entrepreneur is the battle that they have with their own mind and uh, essentially their, their animalistic intuitive self that tries to just preserve and protect. Mm. So don't do this, it's gonna be risky. Don't do that, you're gonna fail. Don't do that, you're gonna be stupid. Don't mm. do that, what such and such gonna think of you. When you learn to be able to control and tame that voice, Mm. and know where that's coming from and do the work to dissolve the previous events or traumas or chaotic periods in your life that are making you think that way, that is very, very powerful. And, you know, I've come to a point in my life where I know that no matter what I do or what I don't do, I'm going to be okay, right? So what work did you do to, to, to do so that? So, you know, when you, well, when, you, when you look at growing a business mm. or you look at anything, a relationship or anything in life, a lot of those... Uh, scenarios where you can see snags or sh we call them shadows in your personality are a result of events in your childhood or your past you haven't been able to find meaning and purpose and bring into balance so i suppose you, in the same way like the way you've looked at the diabetes thing correct it's completely the, the, neutralized there's a the lot point. of people that with the, again god forbid anyone who's got yeah. that that have used that to cap what where they, they're going to go where i they're can't gonna... do this because you know i went to the GPs and I talked about being a bodybuilder and he said, you're never going to get on stage. You're never going to be able to do that with your carbohydrates. And I said, try me. And, and you, you, you win titles, right? You know, the, 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 and this is, you know, I'm going to talk a little bit about business mechanics here, but you know, on life mechanics, one of the most dangerous things that you can do, and this is a little bit off tangent, is you, one of the most dangerous things that you can do is tell someone they can't do it. Yeah, yeah, I'll resonate with that. You know, yeah, yeah. if you tell somebody that they can't do it, and I think the biggest lesson that I've, uh, I've learned in business is never underestimate anybody. Don't underestimate anybody, right? Because if somebody is in enough pain and in a scenario where... It backs up against the wall. They want to change it. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's quite powerful, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Oh, mate. Wow. For, that, for those who are listening. No, no, no. I mean this. But listen, I feel just spoke from the heart there for anyone listening. Uh, me and Phil have cried a few times at the events and stuff, but uh, that's how much it means to you though, right? That's how much it means yeah, to you. Yeah, well, I mean, it creates change, right? You've just got to be able to, to leverage it and rechannel it and, and, and use it productively, right? Because, you know, you can sit on it, you can dwell on it, you can uh, do nothing with it. And it, it uh, you know, you're gonna, life's going to pass by, yeah. right? And, uh, you know, what's on the other side of your challenge? That's how I deal with it. So is, that, is, that, is, that, is, that the, is that the question you ask yourself? That's the framework. So, like, you know, my, my, I, I've, I've built up, like, in my mind, these almost, like, automatic, like, questions or filters. Mm. And you've probably heard, I don't know who says it. Is it, like, Tony Robbins, the quality of your life is down to the quality questions, yes. if you ask? But if you're asking really good quality questions, it unlocks a new perspective. It unlocks consciousness. It unlocks, you know, a new way of thinking, mm. right? And if you unlock a new way of thinking, then you've got a new way of living. Yeah. Wow. Um, <laughs> mate, you know what? I guess what? Like, I never thought in a million years I'd get Phil Graham crying in my <laughs> podcast, but honestly, it just, shows, it, it it just shows how much you care, mate. And, 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 and honestly, mate, to, to have people like you on the podcast, this is why I'm just trying to bring as much value as possible from people who've got skin in the game, they've had success, but also 
fill his testament. <laughs> like, you know, you can have you can have the money, the cars, all this stuff, and Phil has built, you built the diabetic business best in the world. You built the best fitness business in the world. Yeah. But what, what, what drives you now moving forward, Phil? Well, you know, you, 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 we all start growing a business or going into sport or going into something typically mm. to prove somebody wrong or to achieve status or to do this and that. And then when you get to that goal, you realize that flip, I had it all along. So mm. it's how do you recreate purpose and drive. And one of the strongest drives is feeling in, is feeling inadequate or feeling in pain or feeling angry mm. or feeling like you've got a cause or meaning that you want to, you want to improve your current self. You want to improve your current circumstances. Yeah. And that is great leverage for people. But when you get to a point in business where you've ticked off a lot of goals and you don't know what to do next, that can also be a very strange place because you're not used to creating from abundance. And that's where, again, you know, in my opinion, is that complacency in business is, is more toxic than actually lack, right? So whenever you get all the stuff that you have, you've got the promotion, you've got the money, you've got the body, you've got this and that, then actually what begins to actually happen is, you know, and this is just in general observation of life, is you get people that then get too cocky, you then get people that drop their standards, you then get people that revert back to behaviors or ideologies that can essentially put them back years. Right, yeah, self sabotage. So they self sabotage, right? So you've got to look at how do I recreate? A, how do I recreate from a new identity? And that is a very challenging place for a lot of people. So you know, I, I I have a lot of friends that have you know that are older than me that have sold their businesses and X Y and Z, and they're at this point now and they're sitting with all this money and stuff like that, and they just do not know how to recreate. Mm. And that is when you know you know as entrepreneurs we are high risk individuals, mm. right? We like, the, we like the challenge, we like the hunt, we like the chase. And that's when you begin to see, you know, drink, drugs, affairs, porn, uh, all of these like immediately gratifying things to make up for a lack of purpose. Mm. So if you are in a position where you, you know, are, are, are trying to prove yourself, you know, worthy in this world or trying to, you know, improve upon a situation that's probably the greatest point and the hardest point is when you get to that and you've got to create the next level that is difficult that is that is challenging that is uh you know where you really have to you know you you, you get to a point where you start asking really deep questions about life and it begins to then exist beyond you right mm. initially it's just this very selfless kind of goal and focus to brick one through but when yeah. you brick through you can then start looking at, right, okay, what am I leaving for my family? What am I leaving for my kids? I've just had a baby girl, she's two. You know, what am I, they, 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 they are like, you know, that is the, that is the purpose. That is the, uh, the, the, the new level to create from. So, um, or, you know, if you've got a cause or a charity or a mission, or there's something in the world that, you know, you're not happy with, I mean, that's whenever you start to begin to play a, a significantly bigger game. Mm. And I think that, you know, the majority of entrepreneurs are on this journey and climb to break through to find themselves. And then when you find yourself, you realize that you don't need all the fucking bullshit. Mm. You don't need to watch, you don't need the car. You know that you're comfortable. The number one thing is being comfortable in your own skin and being your own best friend. And that comes from, and that's, a, that's, a, that's a thing that people have to go and achieve things and do things in life and get to levels to realize that they've had it all along. Um, and, and, you know, self-trust and assurance, following through in your word, following through on the things that you said you were going to do, keeping your standards, not failing at your own standards, not failing at your own standards is one of the best ways to be successful. Failing at your own standards is one of the, the highest forms of failure, in my opinion. You know, mm. if I say that, you know, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to conduct myself in this way, or I'm going to follow these behaviors, or I'm going to get in this, and I'm, I'm not meeting that. If you say that you're one of these people that's going to lose weight, get in shape, and you never get in shape, and you never, whatever, how can you trust yourself to do anything? Mm. You know, when you think about it, if your goal has been, you know, over the last, you know, 30 days, 90 days to get in shape or to, you know, to lose X, and you're still failing, like that's on you. There's nobody else that's responsible for that. So being very, very clear about your standards, being very, very clear about keeping them, all of those things. Yeah, uh, one, of the, one of the, I say the quotes or the sentences you said recently, Phil, and it's always stuck with me. I mean, one of the reasons Phil's in my life, I'm a significantly more disciplined person with, it's like a conscious and subconscious thing, even though we're friends. Yep. But one of the things I think anyone who knows you would say, 
yes, you're smart, you're switched on, all that type of stuff, yeah. but you're disciplined yeah. and you behave your way to success. Correct, yeah. You know, because I know you're very much process driven as well, even in business, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Even with the help you do with me, it's all right yeah. going, yeah, that's the target, Kirk. But it's no different to us with clientele in our program. Yeah, you set the goals, but what are the behaviors? What's the process that's there yeah. to get you there? Yeah. Um, but but with, with obviously so much going on now with, 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 with business and you've got a beautiful little girl, Penelope, she's absolutely yeah. adorable. And obviously Claire, who I'm great with too. And obviously, technically speaking, all these different people to manage as well. Yeah. I know obviously you're a monster at running team. How, what is your, I wouldn't say secret, but how, how do you plan all of this? What is your, do you have any weekly things you do on a weekly basis? Uh, 12 Penny Entrepreneur uh, just, Business just, Owner just listens to Just off the top of my head, I really protect my focus. I only put my focus into things that I know are going to ROI in the outcomes and goals that I want. Mm. And those outcomes and goals have been reverse engineered, sat down. I've sat down and clearly painted how I want to live my life, how I want to feel. Mm. And every action that I have and do is coordinated back to that. So. Mm. I have, again, a filter through my head when I look at something. Is this aligned with who I want to be? Is this aligned with what I want to do? Is this aligned with what I want to become? Yes, no, no, don't do it. Yes, do it. And I'm not afraid to get my hands dirty. I'm not afraid to do work. Um, I think one thing is that I'm not lazy. Mm. I'm not lazy. I I have almost, like, again, if I'm feeling lazy, I'll, 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 I'll be aware of it. And what do you do and what do you say to yourself in that moment? Well, if say for example, I have to produce content or I have to do something um, I, or, or do something in business or go the extra mile yes. or go and fly and speak somewhere or whatever. Again, questions, does this align with who I want to be? What is like, you know, wh- like what are the upsides to this? What are the downsides to this? Can I live with the downside? What's the downside? Maybe going and traveling and being out of you know, convenience for a couple of hours. Yes, I can live with that. Mm-hmm. So again, it doesn't, help contribute towards the goal and the vision of who I want to be. Yeah, amazing. And then <laughs> that requires consistency. And I know in my heart that consistently applied effort and attention and focus over time builds a new life. So it's, you know, how many times are you going to say no to yourself? How many times are you going to opt out? How many times are you going to quit? I'm not saying that you can't quit at certain points. There may be times where, you know, for example, you're not feeling well yeah. or you've had more important things that have come in. That's another thing. I'm not afraid to change my mind. Yeah. So, you know, I I get it. And then in in relation to you've achieved so much in business, Phil, what excites you most about moving forward? You know, uh, what, 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 what types of people do you love working with? Like what, 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 what is it? What is the, what is the mission? Because I mean, I, I, I don't really have excitement for materialistic things. I've got excitement for experiences and I've got excitement for personal growth and food. And food, yeah. So, I mean, for me, you know, when I set goals, business goals particularly, um, I look at, okay, if I'm at that level and commanding that level of responsibility, the, the process, the consistency, the discipline, the application, the courage to go to that, that just upgrades my belief in self. Um, and whenever I've upgraded that, again, it just gives me a greater sense of power and purpose that's been inside me all along and you have to access that you have to access that by doing things Mm. and um you know i get excited at experiences and you know what's more to get excited about than you know growing as a person growing as a better decision maker that opens up opportunities opportunities create opportunities Mm. and you have to have to know that not all opportunities are created equal and again that just comes with wisdom and awareness so i mean i just have an overall zest and quality outlook on life that you know I, I try to make the most of everything you can find you can grasp for gratitude at the tiniest moments in your life if you're you know about to lose it all or you're going through a divorce or you're going through this and that stop and take stop of what you're grateful for and the big difference you know that you need to realize between wealth and prosperity is prosperity means that you're breathing and you're still alive mm. and that is probably one of the most amazing things you know I, I find that you know if you look at anybody listening to this you know you don't have missiles going over your head. You haven't just had your whole house blown up. You haven't just been, you know, uh, shot at. You know, you're not on the street. You're not on the street. Yeah. I mean, you know, you're sitting on a mobile phone at a thousand pounds, sitting with a beautiful pair of headphones in that probably cost two hundred quid, sitting drinking a drink or food or looking at something, or you're on a flight to somewhere. You're wearing clothes that are exactly the clothes that you want to wear. Um, you're, you've got something exciting to look forward to tonight. Your life isn't that bad, mm. you know? No, so I get, I get it. And um, obviously there's a lot of entrepreneurs, business owners, etc. listen to this. Uh, you're friends with some very 
potent people in the entrepreneur world, very, very public figures. What have you noticed as the common traits of these people that are, they're successful, they're also healthy, basically they've got their shit together, you know, uh, across all, what, what, what traits would you say uh, you've noticed uh, as a whole, if you can narrow it down to three to five? They've got specialized knowledge, they don't claim to know it all, they're down to earth, they're not afraid to be wrong, they're not afraid to be vulnerable, they take violent action on things, they are very, very aggressive with the way that they take action, they, do, they, they move, they act, they're always doing something. Um, they know how to balance their emotions, um, they work on themselves, they, they have some form of, whether it's uh, you know, working on their education or working on their health, they have some you know, way of adding value to themselves. Mm. Um, they, 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 they choose their company wisely, they don't take opinions from people that aren't in a position to give it, they all face criticism, they've all gone through massive challenge. Mm. Um, and uh, they, they, don't, they don't believe that they're successful. They have this innate kind of uh, feeling of there's still more. I've still got more to achieve. Mm. Um, and they, they don't see the success that other people will see in them because they're so desensitized to hearing it. Um, and, you know, that, that's a superpower, you know, you know, the most successful people in the world will always tell you that they've still got work to do. Yeah. You know, they so it's that, it's that, on their laurels, right? It's that constant state of improvement mentality and like you said, never getting complacent because... They're they, just hungry. Yeah. They're just hungry individuals that want to get the absolute most juice out of the squeeze in life. And they know that with the squeeze and the juice that comes out, that's more development, more growth, more experience. You feel like when you, when you put yourself through challenges and you grow and you build, you develop this just sensitivity for really feeling life. Mm. And you know, if you, if you want to absolutely dominate in life, you've really just got to fuck hard and you just got to really go after it, you know? Mm. So <laughs> that quote, I mean, <laughs> you know, that's it. <laughs> and then you got to, you, you, you life, you, life, you got to fucking attack yeah, it. Yeah. You it's it's, it's not easy now, 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 it, now right? more than ever, right? I mean, now more than ever, it's so easy to fold and tap out at the first point of, oh, yeah, this but, isn't you know, going super smooth. You know, I had a conversation very early yesterday morning. Business is a full contact sport. You're either built for it or you're not. If you're not built for it, then don't complain about business. Yeah, and I love the thing you say consistently, whether it applies to business, it applies to body, it applies to any area. Don't mm. complain about the results you didn't get. From the work you didn't do. Exactly. Um, and I know, look, there's a hell of a lot of coaches, Phil, that listen to this too, yeah. who uh, were maybe in my position a couple of years ago, yeah. uh, or they're just simply looking to go to that next level. Now, there's a lot of challenges right now in the coaching space, because obviously it's it's... They had this massive boom a couple of years ago with COVID and, and, and then had some ups and downs. If there are people who consider themselves really, 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 you know, great coaches, yeah. but they're just stuck right now and they're, they're panicking here's, here's a little exactly bit. Here's exactly what you need to do. Remember the cream rises to the top. Go back to the basics. Connect with your customers. Talk with your customers. Find out what they need. Find out the baseline emotions of your market. Focus on making a sale every day. Look at your itinerary. If you're stressed out, create a checklist of what somebody way smarter, way more successful than you would do and use that as your GPS, as your guide and follow through with those activities. Get yourself a mentor, get yourself amongst a community of people that are gonna challenge you, that are gonna say, how are things going? Speak what's on your mind have the right outlets around you. you yeah. Know? And what would you say, we'll wrap this up because I know you've got to shoot. Um, with the, the community that you've built, the business that you've built, what makes it so unique in comparison to some of the other well, coaching services, etc. out there? What makes it so unique? I mean, I could say because I've been in the program, but... Yeah, I mean, you know, my program will build identity. And there's life before my program and there's life after my program. And when you come into my program, you will come out seeing the world that very differently. You will look at the world through a different lens. You will look at challenges through a different lens. You will look at money through a different lens. You will look at your service. You will look at the impact you have through a different lens. And uh, you, will, you will transform your, your complete identity from somebody that just makes a bit of money here and there doing something that they enjoy into actually making an impact on this planet, serving humanity and getting very well paid for it, 
but also thoroughly enjoying the, the stimulus and the challenge that comes with it because you've rewired your whole your whole being. Mm. So yeah. that's a you know my work is very focused on. I, I don't talk about mindset. I talk about identity shift. Mm. And identity is how you see yourself and how you the how you feel the world sees you. Mm. And when you can develop that, that is the that is the, it's just beautiful when you when you can unlock that. Mm. So my purpose is to unlock new identities for all of my students, all my clients. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, look, I, I know you're a very busy man, big man. So. Um, where can people find you, Phil? Uh, on uh, personal, just, apart from Netflix coming up, by the way. Yeah. I cannot wait to watch this man on Netflix. <laughs> just find me on uh, phil-graham.com, fitnessentrepreneur.com. Um, search me on Instagram. I'm not hard to find. Yeah, Phil, thank you so much for your time, guys. I hope you, you enjoyed that. And uh, I'm absolutely over the moon that uh, I made <laughs> the big man cry. But that just shows you how much he cares about what he does who he's trying to become, and more importantly, how much he cares about the people that are investing in him. And I'm testament to that. And uh, look, I've been with you now, best part of five years. Yeah. Um, probably been annoying on so many different no, levels. No, but, but, it, but But no, and, and look, I believe the best is yet to come. And I'm yeah. very grateful for everything you do. But please check Phil out. A lot of his principles, even if you're an entrepreneur, business owner, listen to this, who's not a fitness business professional. Um, so many of the principles you talk about on the social media, they, they carry yeah, over. I'm starting a new podcast soon, just about lessons as a CEO and life and family and growing up with a kid and just documenting it. It's more of a documentation, but yeah. Because yeah. I, I know a lot of my uh, uh, clients, obviously, have met you at the event and obviously yeah. on uh, private, private, you know, dinners yeah. out and things like that. And yeah. you, the, the, even the things you've spoken about has helped grow them, their business. So listen, if you're obsessed with business, entrepreneurship, I know Phil has just spoke from the heart there about so many things, but you genuinely are, mate. I know you're a friend, but an absolute monster what you do. So thank you so much, guys, for listening. And thank you, Phil. And I'll see you next time. Thank you, guys.